Hello my friends, John LaRoof here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode we're going to take a look at Carnegie, specifically the Deluxe Edition. It doesn't really matter, the editions um, I think are the same, whether you got it in retail or whatever, but I ended up pre-ordering this, so we're going to see this from a solo perspective, and I'm actually going to use some of the expansion tiles from the, uh, the box that uh, showcase a little bit more of some of the building variety. So. The whole purpose of me doing this is to be able to demonstrate some of the play for you and see if it is your cup of tea for solo or not. Let's take a look. And as usual, friends, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can continue to grow my fan base. So I'm going to show you, because there's so much sprawling content here, an overview with the camera floating around and then I'm going to take a few turns uh, with it in a fixed position. But overall, this is the main board, okay? And the main board explains to you, it's basically where you're gonna be taking most of your actions. You also have your own personal board, which represents your corporation. These little tiles right here, which I flipped to the B side, that as you um, expand them, you're going to be able to research more things. You slide them out, and that sliding out allows you to develop more and more properties on I shouldn't say properties, but projects, pardon me, on the board in these cities. You will have the action selection area right here, which is the timeline. And this is going to show kind of which um, turns you're going to take, which actions are the four main actions, and then also what is going to happen with the uh, beginning kind of bonus um, initial action. It's the event, I think they call it. You've got cubes that basically represent... Um, I don't know if they really represent goods as much as they're like company assets because you can use cubes to build other departments in here. You use cubes to put down different projects in different cities. And so that's what cubes are for. You also have these transportation tracks, which you're going to move down, and that's going to help you um, kind of gain better rewards when you send your employees on missions, of all things. Uh, they call them missions here. It's kind of like you're you're shipping your employee out to do something in some area in this, like for instance, in the South. And when they come back, they're going to give you whatever the income reward is based on where your little token is. Okay, so for instance, if I was to put an employee on a mission here and then I bring them back at a later date, if my token is here, I would get $1. Okay, and you can research, which is shown here, the cost to get deeper and deeper into these income tracks, these transportation tracks. All right. Uh, then you have the main, I would say not the main, but it's a very large way to score points. It's at least half the game, maybe a little bit less, but these donation spots. And what these do is throughout the game, you're going to spend money in increments of five, unless you have a special building that does an increments of free, uh, three, pardon me, where you will put your discs on these spots. And then that will let you score at the end of the game, for instance, three points for every human resources building or three points for every one of those types of buildings, or three po two points for each of your housing or your, I think, financial infrastructure projects, or maybe three for every track you've gotten to the train spot, uh, et cetera. So you can even spend extra resources and money to get uh, points to the end, and then points for the areas which you built. Maximum of 12 per category, okay? The other way you're going to score major points is linking these major cities which are marked on the board and they have a linkage cost so san francisco is worth two links chicago is worth one new york is one and new orleans is one and depending on how many you linked up you have to link them by having projects in consecutive connected cities here so for instance if i built a housing project in new orleans um, a random one in memphis which doesn't have a reward um, or anything based on it, something in St. Louis, and then to Chicago, that would be two links at the end of the game. And then I would look at this, the transportation tracks in the South and in the Midwest and see which one am I the lowest on, and that would be my rating. So if I had a guy, for instance, in the, the stagecoach area here, but one in the, um, you know, in the, tra the train area here, it would count for a stagecoach. So that'd be two links in the stagecoach. I would come over here, two links, stagecoach, that'd be six points at the end of the game. So there is an area, not area influence, but like an area presence mechanism as you score and spread out throughout this board. There's ways to score points there. 
There's also ways to score as you develop new things here. The farther you develop, the more, the better off your rewards will get. So as I continue to invest in, for instance, housing, each time I bring someone back from a mission in any region, for any of these revealed places that have the exclamation mark on it, I will get that reward. So if I do a lot of research, I'll get a lot of rewards um, for what I'm doing. Those can be in the form of, you know, points, money, cubes, um, additional things. So I have in the B sides, but they vary. And actually in the beginning of the game, I should be starting with a couple of things right here. So you can see that as you begin, three of these have tiles on them. Now the one that doesn't is this, um, I can't remember what this is called, this bridge project it's not bridge right i don't know what it is um but you actually have to research that first once before you can put a marker on it and get it off the ground all right and then you have these departments over here randomly chosen and i chose them all from the expansion you choose 16 of them in the two player in the solo game one of which you can take at the beginning just showing um the department that you're going to kind of have in waiting for you to build okay and you can build them over here. And then part of the mechanic of this game is moving your guys into these departments using HR movement, which represents training, I suppose. Um, and then you stand them up. It's The movement isn't training, that's just positioning, but you stand them up and you sometimes have to pay a cost to do that. That represents the training. And then they're available for you in your departments for the rest of the game, unless you send them on missions, which a lot of times you have to. So for instance, in this case, you have to send a person from this department on a mission someplace to build one of these uh, projects somewhere on the board. You send them to the region that you want them to build. So if I wanted to build, for instance, in the West, I'd pick him up. I'd put him in the West right here. Then I have to spend one or two of my cubes, depending on what I want to build, one or two. And then I'd build it in some city out here. And that's kind of the way that works. And I'll kind of demonstrate that as we play. So those are the main components or the main mechanisms of how you're playing this game. I'll, again, I'll, I'll demonstrate that. And then you have the solo mechanism, which is actually pretty easy once you understand what to do. I don't know why the rules seemed a little bit opaque while I was reading it, but they're fairly simple. When it is your turn on here to pick the different um, timeline you're going to go to, you basically just keep this card face down, and then you flip it up and you execute what it does on the car, what it says. So it'll tell you, depending on what you pick, and I'll demonstrate that, you know, what'll happen, and then you will um, look at the card in a specific way. So for instance, this card shows, you know, the four different timelines. Depending on which you pick, it will do one of those things. And if it can't complete an action to its fullest, it will move this card down these rows and stuff it under one of these, um, or tuck it under one of these point values, and that will be worth a certain amount of points at the end of the game. Uh, and if you if it picks for itself, it will do whatever is highlighted in orange here. That's also its strongest suit. So when you're playing the beginner mode like I am, because I haven't beaten it yet, I just played it once so far, it tells you exactly what's going to go to. So you know if you pick the research action, which is what this is, this is going to be a strong move from for um, Andrew Carnegie, your opponent, because whatever's showing here is strong. Now, as you ratchet up the difficulty you can use these cards, which don't tell you what he's going to pick, okay? They're just basically hidden information. I don't know if they're any stronger, I doubt it, than these cards, but you just don't know what you're going to be able to do, so it's, it's a little more unpredictable. And uh, so that's basically it. Let me go ahead and demonstrate a couple of turns for you, and then I'll give you some feedback on what I think of the game. All right, thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is actually this move right here. I'm going to begin with the HR move. So I put this heavy white or heavy metal gear, which is very nice, um, on the south space. And that will indicate that I have I could send somebody, I'm sorry, I could retrieve somebody if I had someone in the south on a mission and get the bonus. So I don't. It, pardon me, the, HR, the um, AI does not do anything either when you put it on those spaces, only the donation spaces. So I place this down here. And then because it's me picking first, I flip it over. And it says, okay, I've done an HR action. So for the HR action, it tells me 
to move this card two spaces over. And that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go one, two, and this card is gonna be worth three points at the end of the game. I tuck it, his turn is over, okay? Now I get to do my turn and my steps, and I'm gonna be moving these around. I can move them six spaces, and I wanna get these guys out here so that I can start using them. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, uh, probably five, six. So we're gonna do that, and that allows me to kind of get people in place. I'm just wondering, maybe what I'm gonna do instead of the way I did that is I'm actually, cause I feel like doing research. Instead of going up there with my six, I'll move them over here. Okay, so now my turn is done from the movement standpoint. I can pay to activate and stand up my people. And I'm gonna do that. So this is gonna cost me three, six, seven, eight, and this is free, so that's eight dollars. I pay the eight bucks, get some change, and that turn is over. Now, I move the train showing that he is gonna choose the next action, and lo and behold, if I was paying attention, which I should have been, he will choose the HR action, but that's okay. I mean, it doesn't matter, I'm just demonstrating this. So he's gonna do an HR action, which was very similar, so, oops, and I forgot I have to move that spot over there. So he's now gonna go HR, and it's gonna be in the West, since it's not a donation spot, he doesn't do anything. And since this is a stronger situation, he is going to move his space three over. One, two, three. So now he tucks it under the six points. So he's scored nine points thus far, I haven't scored any. Um, and sometimes that happens, he gets off to a lead like that. So back to me in the HR, uh, I could move a bunch other, I could do six more moves, but I don't really have any more to go as far as that's concerned. So maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna bring him over here and then just stand him up for free, all right? Now it's back to me, this slide's over. And by the way, the game is played in 20 turns and there are 20 cars in this deck. So at the end of it, all of these should be over in their final position right here. And you don't have to take only five of each action. But if you take an action and you've maxed it out, the next time you take an action, you have to move the tile under it, or at least the next one available, even wrapping around, that hasn't finished. So you would, let's say you wanted to take just a bunch of HR actions, well, that's going to start to spill into your total number of business action, department actions you can take. And so that's kind of how the, way the game works. It's not constrained specifically on um, the on how many of one type, but you can only take 20 and it starts to you know, basically just short you on the other ones as you go forward. So that HR is done. It's time for me. I'm going to do a research action now. Um, and, but what's, what's uh, got me plagued a little bit is I'd like to try to get some guys on missions first. So maybe I will change my mind. And I'll put some guys in some missions first. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the department, the business department. Okay. And I was supposed to move that over here. So Again, he does not do anything on the West. I have no guys to retrieve. His business department says, take the first department of the research stack. And it's the lowest numbered one. So this is the 30, so he takes that. That is his. He will score two points for those at the end of the game. And then he is finished with his move. And we tuck that under the zero because he did his move and that was all it was. So that card is not gonna be worth any points to him, but he gets two points for that. So now for this, I've got a couple things I want to do. I want to get some people out on missions. Um, and I know that I want to do the research action. I know he is actually going to do um, another R&D or another um, HR action on me really quickly, which is going to work out okay, and I'll show you why. So let's do some of these things. And I know you can't see it, so I'm just going to narrate some of them. Um, I want to send people on missions, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I'm, I've decided I want to focus on the West this game. And I'm going to move this guy out here, put him in the west, and I'm going to spend um, one of these cubes to build a project, a financial project, over here in San Francisco. So we've spent that cube, and we've put that down there. And now I'm going to move the other one out, and I'm going to put him in the east, and I'm going to build a housing project, which is going to help me develop some money also. But it'll be a little bit cheaper. Um, one cube, and I'm going to put that uh, over here in New York, housing project, all right? 
And what I'm going to attempt to do, if I can pull it off, is connect New York all the way with San Francisco, which may be a long and hit Chicago along the way. That might be a stretch, but I'm going to try to give that a shot. Um, and I also want to focus on these two because I'm going to try to get to this point spots over here in the income and start to generate some in-game points. Okay, and I'll show you a little bit else what I'm going to be doing in a second. So I've used that. Now I could um, build a department, which I will do. Um, and I'm going to build a department and I have to pay two cubes to do that. And I'm going to build this one that I set aside, which helps me overpay for people if I want to, to generate points. Okay. Or I can underpay for them to stand them up and lose points. That's up to me. All right. And now I'm going to send these guys on projects. I'm going to send this one out to the East because I know he's going to pick HR, which is going to put me in the East. All right. So I put him out there and I'm going to get $6 because I'm running a little bit sh uh, shy on money. I'm going to send this guy out there and I'm going to get two cubes. And I'm going to send this guy out there, but I'm going to send him, I think, instead. Um, see, the West doesn't come up very often at all, which makes it, that was kind of foolish that I put him out there now that I think about it. Because the West isn't going to be out for a little bit. I've got some other ones that are more prevalent. The East is more prevalent in this case. These are kind of randomly flipped around, so I should have thought about that. But, oh well, it is what it is. Maybe what I'll do is I will put him out in the um, Midwest, because that, that also is going to be coming up here pretty soon. All right. So we did all that. Um, I don't know why I... Oh yeah, never mind. Um, that's right. I did that right. I'm looking at this. This I shouldn't have. I don't know what I was doing. I should not have activated this building. I apologize. I'm gonna have to back, back some of those out. Sorry for that, everybody. So these, all of these, right there, could not take place. That was one and one. So let me back those up, and I apologize. Um, and get my two cubes back because that was a specific type of building for that action, not for this one. My mistake, I was getting carried away. Um, so I was able to deploy some of those on missions and get some money, which is what I wanted to do, uh, and get some cubes. I just wasn't able to do that yet. All right, so sorry about that. We got them out there, we did what we wanted, which is generate cubes and money. All right, my turn's over. I slide it over here. Now we come to him, he's going to do another. Uh, personnel movement. But before he does that, we are going to be able to recover our men from the east. They're going to score me one $1 a piece, plus they would score me any of these that I've opened, but I don't have them open because I kind of got myself confused, so I apologize for that. Um, still learning the game, just wanted to do this video sooner rather than later. So I get $1. I don't have anything over here, so I get 2 bucks for that because that's where I was there. Not the greatest to pay out, but I saw it coming, so I might as well use it. All right, and then he flips his card over, over and he is going to move four now. That's a big one. So four is one, two, three, four. That's a 10 point card for him. So that's gonna be strong. For me, I do have some laying down, which I'm happy about. So now I can move them back to where I wanted. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. I don't stand him up yet. Um, so that's four out of the six I could do. And I think I'm gonna stick with that. And then I have to pay five dollars to stand him up and he stands up for free okay so i paid the five bucks now we're good to go and now i'll be able to overpay to get a couple of points which i'm going to try to do all right so i know what he's going to do next the city but i'm going to do research instead so this comes over here and the train moves i'm going to do the research action so you can see that but also i want to do it so doing that we put this over here if i had people in the east i could return them and get the the benefits. I don't. I don't have any mission, but that's okay. He will draw that card, like we said. Then we will flip it over, and he has a, what he's got is a two times action over here. So what this says is on the south tra transport track, gonna, his disc, pardon me, two time. All right. So he's going to go one, two. There we go. He moves that over there, and then he's done the whole thing there we are. So that's uh, taken care of, squared away, and we're good. Now, 
let's see. What I'm going to do for my research is I've got three, six, nine research points. So I'm going to pull these out. So this requires four to pull that out. So that's four gone. And then I am going to try to get something out of the West, but I've got a few more Midwest things coming up. So I'm going to, I'm going to boost, boost this up here. So that'd be five on my research, six, seven. And let's go here. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go eight, nine by sliding that out to get a little bit more action there in the financial one. And so that's how the research works. It lets you get deeper down these tracks, deeper over here, and uh, it increases your income and your bonus opportunities. Okay, so we've done that. Move this over. Now we'll demonstrate the final turn here that I'll show on camera, which is going to be this action, and he is going to take that in the Midwest. So, in the Midwest, I will go ahead and return this guy, getting my $2, which I'm happy to get. One, two. Okay. And then, for his part, he is going to build in four different cities, the leftmost in each, uh, the leftmost open one in each of the cities. So, he's going to build in Portland, which is there, Boise, which is there, Denver and Los Angeles. So industry, and then Denver right there. Okay, so he's done his turn. He did it all, so he, we put that under zero. Now for me, I get to move these guys out on the projects. And let's just go back to where I was in this um, situation. So I do want to go to the east. So we're going to put that over there. We're going to build this financial one, like I said before, for one cube. So that moves this over here to New York. And then um, I would like to try in some way, shape, or form to get all the way over there. And I think it will be tough, but I'll be able to give it the college try. So let's go ahead with San Francisco and let's build this for two cubes by putting him out there. All right, the reason I did that is now I have an uncovered $2 and an uncovered point. So every time I do um, one of these mission returns, I will get some of that as well. So now it gives you an, an understanding of the actions. And the only thing I didn't show you is the donations. So when you go here, what he is going to do is he is going to, in fact, well, I'll just play one more because he's going to do that. Okay. So he is going to take that action. He's going to go here and he's going to donate to this cause and he has infinite money so he's going to donate to this specific one right here and if it's blocked we move the card over one space and if it's not and it is not he puts his guy over there and what that's going to do is at the end of the game for everything that i've built according to these tracks he gets points for my work so it immediately tells me oh i don't want to build a lot of cities in these small areas that would be a mistake so I should try to snake my way through the bigger cities if I can, so I don't feed him with points. All right? And so he did that. I get a chance to do the donation. I got to spend five bucks to do it. That's okay. One, two, three, four, and five. And in my case, what I think I'm going to do donation-wise is to donate um, a disc into this one. I'm going to try to build a few of these bridge infrastructures. I've already built one. Maybe I can build a couple more. Okay, then he is going to take one of these tiles, and it looks like he's going to take one of each. So he's going to take the lowest number, which is an 18 here, then the lowest number of this one, which is a 25, and then the lowest research, which is this 30. So he gets a lot of those. He got everything, so that goes to zero. And on my end, I can then generate some more cubes, which I'm going to need. So I'm going to send this guy on a mission. And I have to do some returning on missions here pretty soon. Um, maybe I'll send him to the Midwest because I want to do a little more research. So let's send him to the Midwest. All right, oops, the Midwest, pardon me. And when I do that, I can take two cubes. All right, that's enough from a standpoint of taking... Um, some turns here and now let's go ahead and i'll show you what i think of the game and uh tell you my pluses and minuses of it but that's basically you can see just quickly 
So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns. That was roughly a third of the game. Does not take so long to play if you know what you're doing. Um, and he just did that, so now we're back to me. It is a lot to juggle with your brain as far as what, what your strategy is going to be, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. I don't think this game is overly uh, difficult to execute when it comes to how do I do a certain move. And that's, that's one of the pluses I'll show you. I'll talk about that. Um, but there is a lot of variety. There's a lot of things that you can do in regards to the buildings, in regards to your strategy, even though there are only four categories of actions. How you execute those does provide some uh, nice strategic choices and some good planning, and it makes for a pretty strategic game. So let me take you up top. Let's see what I think about it. So that gives you a feel, I think, of how this game plays from a solo perspective. I would rate this game um, on a complexity level as, as medium heavy. Um, yeah, probably medium heavy. It's If anything, it's medium heavy, leaning towards medium. The, the choices, once you know how to play the game as far as the mechanics, you aren't going to have to look up on the rules a lot as far as, well, how do I do this or how do I do that? Because they're fairly straightforward. There's an event. Once you know the event, you take the action, and it's it's kind of shows it right here, you know, on these little cards, what to do. Um, but I didn't find that it was that difficult to juggle, and I like that because sometimes when you get a, a pretty heavy strategy game or a pretty meaty Euro game, they can become difficult in how to execute it. Too many things going on, too many different turns, not turns, but too many steps per action. I mean, it could, this, this game has the look, and that's probably because it's, the artwork is just like a lot of the uh, Vtel games, Lacerda games, but it's got it's from um, what is it, Ian O'Toole, who did the uh, the artwork. It it looks like it could be a Lacerda with the way it is, but it's not, and I don't think it plays like that by any means. It's definitely more of a Euro game. It is not as such a procedurally like step A, step A one, step A two, A three, A four, A five. You know, it's not like that. It's it's more of a, a tactical, or I'm sorry, a strategic Euro, which I appreciate. Which leads me to my first plus about the game. Um, the solo itself is pretty easy to execute because you're flipping over a card and you're just following the card. So you can put most of your focus on what you're doing. However, the difficulty you use will give you information on what the solo is going, to, the, the automa is going to do. And I like that because that kind of helps with bringing the the focus not just on what you're going to do, but also what he's going to do. And um, and depending on how much he can accomplish, you actually, in some ways, you want him to accomplish most of it because then he won't go up so high on the card value. But if for whatever reason he is blocked, those cards then score default points. I think that's a pretty interesting and uh, very, very smart system for a solo game where, you know, you don't have like, if this, then that, if this, then that. No, no, if this... It's only this, and if it doesn't work, then you just give him points, which is a lot easier than a massive flowchart to say, try to do this kind of action, but if it doesn't work, then try to do this, and if that doesn't work, then try to do this. I just think this is great. It's a, it's a different approach to um, an automa, and not one that I've seen very often, and I like it. I think it's a refreshing change from the major flowcharts there, uh, and it still provides a, a very, I think, complex, I, I'm sorry, not complex, competitive uh, solo bot. So the first time I played the game, I played it a couple times on Board Game Arena and I always got crushed, but I finally played it in person and it was, I think he beat me 98 to 111. So I thought that was pretty close. 12, 13 point game, 13 point game. Um, and I thought that was good for my first one, right? So I anticipate getting better because once the game clicks, you kind of know what he's going to do and you can play into that. And that's why as you ratchet up the difficulty, you can put more of those hidden cards in there so that you don't exactly know what he's going to do. So that's the first thing. I think the AI has done very well. I think it plays beautifully as a solo game. Uh, it's not a brain burner, nor do I have to learn a second set of rules to execute what he's going to do. Love that. Because there's enough to focus on with your strategy. And that's the second point I like about this game. This game is not a... Well, it should, I don't think it should necessarily be a tactical experience. It's much more of a strategic experience. You can kind of look and see, okay, what's the kind of flow that I'm going to try to get these turns out, knowing he's going to affect it too a bit, 
but I'm going to try for strategy. I'm going to focus on this part of the game or this part of the game or this kind of engine. I'm going to put these kind of de departments in and maybe they'll help me build a little point engine that I can do this or, or I'm going to do some connections and, or maybe I'm going to get some, how, somehow I'm going to get those donations in places that are going to allow me to score big. So I've got to, I've got to pre-do my board in such a way or my, my department in such a way that's going to allow me to capitalize on that. And I really like that. I also like how, you know, the, the AI can swoop up and get one of your donations if you're not lucky um, or if you're, if you're un unlucky, I should say. And all of a sudden, this infrastructure you've built up now scores him the points. So that's cool. I like that kind of gotcha aspect to it. It's, it's, well, that's, I guess, the only random part, of course, is what he's going to do, and sometimes that can happen. But there's got to be some randomness, or it's just a complete simulation, and, you know, that may or may not be what you're looking for. So I like that about this game. I think it's very enjoyable to be able to sit down and have a Euro strategy experience instead of a, you know, tactical experience or kind of a mishmash between. I think this is definitely a strategic game. Uh, also, you have full knowledge of all the buildings you put in. You can either put them in randomly like I did, or you can um, select some, however you want to do it. You can do whatever you want in, in different ways. And that could m allow you to do a, try out a st specific strategy with a specific combination of buildings, should you be able to get them all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, overall, I really like this game. I know that some of the people that had commented on my unboxing were hesitant. I found this game appeals to me. Uh, it's going to stay in my collection for a while, maybe, you know, hopefully permanently. I think I can find something here that I will like to play um, on a regular basis, you know, um, several times a year and still not get tired of it, still not feel like I've exhausted it. And I don't know if it's going to come in every one of the, the games, but, you know, the version I bought when I pre-ordered it, it came with those extra building expansions, which basically doubles the buildings. It came with an asymmetric start, um, and it also came with things that, that change up the donation. So there's a lot of gameplay that I have, a lot of variety in this box. So I think it's great. I think it's easy to play solo. I enjoy it. If you, um, thinking of things that might you might not appeal to you, you know, if you don't like Euro style games, you may not like this one. Um, I mean, I think it's very much a Euro game. It's not really an economic game. It's a slight engine builder, but there's, it's definitely like, you know, Categories of this focus on this. Categories of that focus on that. Very tight resources with the number of cubes you have or your money. It's 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 pretty tight in that regard. Um, definitely has a feel like you don't have enough time to do ex all that you want. You want to do more. But I like that. I actually like this game. Does not overstay its welcome. I think that you know you can play a solo game in just over an hour, not including setup or takedown. And I think that's really good uh, for this. It's not like a three hour commitment. I guess unless you really have a lot of AP. Um, but I don't seem to have that kind of issue. So overall, hopefully this was informative for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Whatever you play in the future, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.